In this part, we're going to talk about exploits and how vulnerabilities can be exploited. We will also discuss where exploits can be found and what tools can be used for exploiting vulnerabilities. Let us start by distinguishing a few terms that are central when vulnerabilities are exploited. Recall that the vulnerability is an issue or inherent weakness that can result in a successful attack. The vulnerability is typically something that resides in the computer software, either in a server or in a client, for example, a web browser. But there are also examples of vulnerabilities in the actual communication protocols. In general, there could also be vulnerabilities in the way how an organization is treating the data or where it is stored. While it by definition means that a vulnerability can lead to loss of confidentiality, integrity or availability, how to actually achieve this is not explicitly covered by the vulnerability itself, though this can be implicitly obvious in some cases. An exploit is a specific set of commands or program code that takes advantage of the vulnerability. It is a well-defined way of using a vulnerability in order to compromise confidentiality, integrity or availability. The exploit is typically the piece of code used to get access to the vulnerable system. It could also be a specifically crafted request sent to a server that will not be properly handled by the server, thereby bypassing security controls. The exploit success could be deterministic, but it could also be subject to many circumstances, some of which the attacker cannot control. A related term is the payload. If the exploit is how to compromise the system, then the payload is what you want to do with the compromise. The payload is attached to the exploit. If we use a spaceship as the exploit that penetrates the security of the system, then the payload is the cargo the spaceship is carrying and delivers to the system as part of the attack. The payload is often used in the context of being able to execute arbitrary code on the system, so the payload can be to open a connection to the attacker, to launch a cryptocurrency miner, or to deploy ransomware software on the remote system. One well-known collection of exploits is the one found on the Exploit Database, or ExploitDB. This is a non-profit project maintained by the security company Offensive Security. It does not collect vulnerabilities, but instead exploits that can be used to take advantage of vulnerabilities. They range from proof of concepts that just demonstrates the presence of a vulnerability to more mature code that can be used to compromise the security of software and systems. The database holds tens of thousands of exploits and is continuously increasing. ExploitDB also hosts a collection called Google Hacking Database. Its name is not really representative for its content, though. The database hosts a collection of search strings that can be used to find sensitive information that has been indexed by search engines. Though Google is the most well-known and widely used search engine, the database is not restricted to search queries for that engine. The information found does not necessarily have to be sensitive, but might expose files with potentially sensitive information or system logins that should normally not be exposed. An exploit kit is a collection of several vulnerabilities and their corresponding exploits. They can be used to take advantage of an unpatched computer testing exploits for many possible vulnerabilities basically at the same time. They rely on the fact that there are new vulnerabilities discovered frequently and that systems are not immediately patched. Exploit kits first appeared around 2006 and they have been very actively used. After 2017, they have seen some competition due to the market shifting a bit towards cryptocurrency mining and ransomware against large targeted organizations. However, both these are payloads that can be part of an exploit kit as well. The exploit kit is deployed on a web server and the goal is to get the victim computer to visit that server. This can be accomplished in several ways. One alternative is to use phishing emails to get the victim to click on a link in the email, taking her to the web server hosting the kit. Another variant is to compromise another legitimate web page and add code that will redirect the web browser to the exploit kit server. Visiting the malicious server could also be accomplished by a malicious advertisement that the user clicks. Once the victim computer has made contact with the malicious server, the victim computer is checked for vulnerabilities that are supported by the exploit kit, and if it is vulnerable, an exploit is launched. Assuming that the vulnerability allows arbitrary code execution on the victim computer, there are a range of payloads to choose from. 
common payloads or ransomware programs and cryptocurrency miners that will mine cryptocurrency on behalf of the adversary. It could also open a command shell on the victim computer such that the adversary can execute commands. It could be a banking trojan that steals money or banking information, for example, by changing destination accounts for payments, or it could scan the computer for valuable or sensitive information and send it back to the adversary. In this common scenario, the vulnerabilities that are used are vulnerabilities that can be remotely exploited when a victim visits a web page. This has historically often been vulnerabilities in Adobe Flash, a plugin that was discontinued in 2020 and is not supported anymore. Other examples of vulnerabilities in web browsers or in Adobe Reader or other common plugins that are supported by browsers. Exploit kits can be rented from criminals on daily, weekly or monthly basis and are usually not advertised in common places. They have been known to be advertised on Darknet but seem to nowadays mostly be rented through private channels. So they are not just for anyone to download and use at their own will. A common and well-known tool for exploiting vulnerabilities is the Metasploit framework. Different from exploit kits, this is an open source framework that anyone can download and use. It consists of more than 2000 different exploits that can be used in an automated way. It is suitable for penetration testing but can also be used in a more offensive way to get illegitimate access to systems. It is based on modules and anyone can contribute with new modules. There are a few different types of modules. One type is the exploit modules, which can be used against specific vulnerabilities. Another type is the payloads. Since these modules are separated from each other, they can be combined in different ways. One exploit can be used with one of several different payloads in order to achieve the goals of the attack. A common payload is to open a command shell on the vulnerable computer. The most important payload is Meterpreter, which can be seen as a command shell but with specific built-in possibilities to interact with the target computer. Meterpreter can be used with some of the post-exploitation modules. These are modules that can be used after the vulnerability has, has been exploited. They can be used to automatically collect information about the target computer or system, to retrieve credentials stored on it, or to install keyloggers or interact with the camera or the microphone. Another type of modules is the auxiliary type. These modules can help accomplishing miscellaneous tasks that might be required for exploiting vulnerabilities. This includes scanning for the presence of vulnerabilities, sniffing on traffic and data, and to implement certain server functionality that could be part of a successful attack. It is clear that exploits are not only publicly and easily available, there are also easy to use tools for using them against systems and applications. Due to this, it is important to limit the window of opportunity for an attacker and to have processes for efficiently mitigating vulnerabilities. In the next part, we will look at the life cycle of a vulnerability to better understand how and when we can minimize the possibilities for an attack. We will also look at how an organization can facilitate responsible disclosures of vulnerabilities so that systems can be patched before the vulnerability is exploited by malicious actors.